We're here at Healthy Living Healthcare in Falmouth, Maine. We are with Peter Knight, who's a naturopathic doctor, and Susan Feckety, who is a woman's health specialist. They are going to talk to us about wonderful healthy meals we can have for the summer and show us some recipes. So Susan, we live in Maine. There's all this wonderful, beautiful produce and food here, and it's Maine food. It's in our backyard. And there's parties and festivals and summer vacations and company coming up. Everybody wants to be in Maine in the summer. So what kind of good food do you recommend? I'm a big fan of toting your own when you've got a uh, event that you're going to be going to. In my world, summer in Maine is second only to the holidays for the biological train wreck of <laughs> bad food. What I see is uh, the traditional uh, lobster meal that we have in Maine. It's going to be lobster, white potatoes, probably french fries, and coleslaw. So lobster is a beautiful protein. It's a wonderful food if treated well. Potatoes, not so much. They don't have so much to offer. Uh, coleslaw is a good food. It's a cabbage, and that's a vegetable. So I'll take that over the french fries. But what I like to tell you a little bit about is what I think of as a uh, more balancing meal. So I've made a lobster salad, which is a very portable uh, thing to take or something beautiful to serve in alternative to your typical clan bake uh, kind of meal that contains things that are really good for you, uh, much less hidden sugar, hidden starch that's going to disrupt the hormone system, plus loaded with antioxidants. Now you're going to show us this food. Exactly. So it's really, so it's really quite easy to do, and I'm looking forward to having this for my lunch today. So uh, I have a lobster. Um, a beautiful bed of organic romaine lettuce, which is a wonderful farmer's market item, or uh, you can learn how to grow that yourself. Um, I've got tomatoes on here for lycopene, which is a very powerful and healthy antioxidant, plus it's colorful. Um, you'll see that I've got uh, steamed, lightly steamed broccoli mm. here. And broccoli is a particularly fabulous food for women because it contains uh, a couple of elements that are really good for helping women balance estrogen, particularly at the perimenopause time of life when uh, nurturing your estrogen is a really important thing that you want to do. One thing too you'll notice, I mean a lot of people make lobster salad. Right? You go to a restaurant, you're going to get a lobster salad and it's going to be chunks of lobster uh, in a mayonnaise dressing. That is a fairly hazardous food, as far as I'm thinking, because <laughs> usually that's very inflammatory fat, not the good kind of fat that we really want to emphasize. So the dressing that I'm going to be making is going to include uh, this, uh, pieces of this beautiful avocado stirred up. I might steal some of Dr. Knight's olive oil and lemon juice, which you get to you know make with this wonderful, fun little squeezer thing. Uh, uh, this is a delightful thing actually for kids to operate, yes. right? Um, and that is a very simple, versatile dressing that really brings out the wonderful flavor instead of uh, hiding it, masking it in a big pile of mayonnaise. So Peter, it's grilling season. What can you tell us for some good healthy tips about how to prepare our food safely? Unfortunately, the grilling of meats has been associated with the production of compounds that actually increase the risk of cancer. Wow. Eating a well-done, charbroiled, quarter-pound hamburger actually has the equivalent of those compounds of smoking six cigarettes. Ouch. The good news is that there's simple things that you can do in your grilling process to help to decrease the production of those and minimize your risk. The first thing that I think of as being very important is the choice of meat. Leaner cuts of meat are going to have a much lower production of those compounds, and they also drip less fat onto the coals or onto the gas elements, so you don't get those flare-ups that uh, I know we like the smell of, but they're not good for you. Um, the second piece is actually the heating temperature. Uh, really high heat will cause more production of those compounds, so cooking things at lower temperatures and using indirect heating where you're not cooking right over the coals will also decrease the production of those compounds. Great. Choosing other alternatives such as seafood and vegetables uh, will also decrease the production. There's minimal production from seafood and vegetables almost none. Uh, so grilling things such as portobello mushrooms or asparagus are a great alternative and, and taste delicious when mm -hmm. grilled. And the final thing that you can do is actually in the choice of adding things to the food that you're grilling. Um, adding uh, garlic to a, a hamburger patty will actually reduce the production of the compounds by almost 60%. Uh, you can make a marinade using herbs such as rosemary and thyme and garlic with olive oil and put that on your piece of meat and that will also greatly reduce the production of, of the compounds too. 
And so I actually, on our website, I actually have a list of some uh, recipes for the marinades and other healthy grilling suggestions. Um, and that's at www.mehealthyliving.com in our blog section. Peter, these are wonderful tips. We'll check out your website and we really appreciate it. Happy grilling this summer. Thank you.